Dermatology is the study of the skin. Any individual can occasionally contract a skin condition, but several are more commonly seen in the physically active population. Skin infections may be caused by bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Related inflammatory skin conditions may result from mechanical, environmental, allergic, or chemical skin reactions. Early identification of the ensuing lesions and specific treatment minimize the healing time and prevent both the spread and the recurrence of the condition. The epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis make up the integumentary system. It is the interface between the body and the external environment. The integumentary system is a dynamic system that forms a barrier against invading organisms and outside influences. It allows people to sense and adapt to the environment in terms of thermoregulation, fluid loss, proprioception, and kinesthesis. The nails are made up largely of keratin. They're found on the dorsal surface of all the fingers and the toes. They are hard, clear surfaces that present a pink color from the underlying highly vascular epithelial cell layers. The luna is at the proximal end. It's a moon-shaped white opaque layer that protects the nail matrix. The nail fold surrounds the lateral and proximal nail and also hooks into the nail bed to hold the nail on the finger or the toe. First, we're gonna start with the skin. Its major function is to protect the body from bacteria, fungi, various viruses, and other germs in the outside environment. It also helps to regulate body temperature. It prevents fluid loss and nutrients through the cutaneous surface. And it also aids in the transmission of information from the outside environment to the brain. The skin has several layers. The first is the epidermis, which contains the germinal layer where the production of new skin cells or epidermal cells occurs, and the sebum, or oily substance that binds the epidermal cells, is produced. The dermis contains the sweat glands, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, blood vessels, and a complex array of nerve endings. The subcutaneous tissue is composed of fat for insulation and energy storage. Whenever the skin is damaged, a lesion appears. We can evaluate the skin. This should be conducted in a well-lit room that provides a private and respectful environment. A healthcare provider of the same gender should be conducting the examination. We begin with taking a history and asking the patient if they have any skin problems to report. If they have felt ill, nausea, have had a fever, body aches, or fatigue. We want to avoid touching the patient whenever possible, and if necessary, wear gloves during our evaluation. Skin lesions can be caused by direct trauma, allergic reactions, chemical irritants, heat, cold, bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Lesions appear when damage occurs to the skin, so it's important to understand that. Also understanding that skin lesions can sometimes be contagious, which is why wearing gloves during our evaluation is important until we determine what type of skin lesion the individual is suffering from. When we're doing our visual inspection, we should look at several things. Look at the pattern of the lesions. Does the lesion appear scratched, raised, or depressed? Does it occur in groups or clusters? Is it bullous, moist, dry, or crusted, or even draining fluid? We also want to look at the color. What is the color of the lesion, the surrounding tissue, and the fluid or the crust? Also look to see if the color is uniform with well-defined borders and has symmetry. We also want to look at the location. Is the lesion above or below the hairline on the scalp or on or near the genitals or even the mouth? Sometimes similar viruses and bacteria occur in different parts of the body. So determining the location of the inspection is important. The pictures on this slide have different causes of conditions or diseases. Things can be either non-palpable or palpable and solid. An example of a non-palpable lesion would be such as a macule. 
A palpable and solid lesion could be a papule, a wheel, a tumor, or even a plaque. There's some different descriptions in here that might be helpful as you move through this lecture. Also, we can have palpable and fluid filled. Things like vesicles, bullias, and pustules are palpable and fluid filled. We can also have secondary lesions that are caused by an external force. We can have damaged or diminished skin surfaces. Things like excorision, fissures, erosions, and even ulcers. We can also have augmented or increased skin surfaces, which means the skin kind of bubbles up. These would be things like crust, scales, lictification, scars, and even keloids. In your textbook, you also have this table. Skin lesions are identified by their size and their depth. So this information may be helpful to you as we move through this section as well. Uticaria is usually systemic in origin and is caused by a hypersensitivity to food or drugs, infection, physical agents, or even psychic stimuli. This condition results in wheels or smooth, slightly elevated areas that appear red or white and is accompanied by severe itching. Cholerogenic uticaria is provoked by heat, exercise, or fever. Its clinical presentation reveals small papules that first appear in the upper thorax and neck and spread inferiorly to involve the entire body. The systemic symptoms are rare and include generalized sweating, abdominal cramps, dizziness, wheezing, and bradycardia. Common sites for cholerogenic uticaria are the inner aspects of the arms, legs, and the lateral flank. We want to treat the symptoms of this condition. We can also have exercise-induced uticaria, which is a variation of cholerogenic uticaria with much larger lesions. It is successfully treated by prescribed antihistamines, anticholerogenics, and beta agonists. Cold uticaria is a response to cold exposure for example, ice massage. This is non-allergic, which means it's a non-allergic response to ice being placed on the body. This condition often becomes apparent when a cold pack or an ice cup is placed on an individual who is hypersensitive to cold. Individuals respond well to small doses of oral corticosteroids. Skin infections may stem from bacteria, fungi, or viruses. An abscess may be acute or chronic and is a localized infection. A cavity may form by the liquefaction of necrosis within solid tissue. It may affect any body tissue such as bones, tooth roots, appendix, brain, the gums, lungs, abdominal walls, gastrointestinal tract, ears, tonsils, sinuses, breasts, kidneys, and even the prostate gland. Lesions appear as encapsulated pockets of pus. The application of an ice pack or taking a hot bath may relieve the pain. If an abscess is associated with a fever, then the individual should be seen immediately by a physician. Some abscesses need to be surgically treated. This is a walled off lesion in the picture. It began as folliculitis that became a furuncle and then an abscess. Note the older scar from a previous furuncle and cystic acne lesions. Furuncles are infections that progress deeper and extend out from a follicle. The common mechanism of injury for a furuncle or a boil is repeated friction or repeated blunt trauma to an area. It typically progresses to a deep arithmetic nodule, a pustule, and then a fluctuate mass. A carbuncle is merging of several furuncles. Physical activity is contraindicated for individuals who suffer from this bacterial skin condition until no infection is noted. Trauma can lead to cellulitis or thrombophobitis, which are serious conditions. Common sites include the buttocks, back of the neck, face, and the axilla. Treatment requires several weeks of systemic antibiotic therapy and may also include immobilization, incision, drainage, and in severe cases, even hospitalization. A sebaceous cyst is a closed sac 
under the skin that's filled with a cheesy-like or oily material. The signs and symptoms include small, non-painful lumps underneath the skin. Growth is usually very slow and typically is not painful. The skin may be warm to the touch in the affected area. Commonly grayish-white, cheesy, and sometimes foul-smelling material can drain from the cyst. This is most commonly found on the face, neck, and trunk. If the lump becomes infected or inflamed, other symptoms may include skin redness, tenderness, or sore skin. Fortunately, with individuals for sebaceous cysts, this is not contagious, so there is no mode of transmission. Acne is experienced by most adolescents at one point or another. Its cause is unknown, but it is believed to be due to a hormonal imbalance. At eight or nine years of age, the adrenal gland begins to produce increasing amounts of androgen that causes the sebaceous glands to enlarge and produce more sebum. Sebum secretion peaks during adolescence and declines after age 20. Most commonly, sebaceous glands get clogged with sebum and then debris from the face. They can become infected by common skin bacteria. Common signs and symptoms. Blackheads are actually not dirt, so scrubbing or washing will not remove it. A whitehead represents follicles that have become dilated with cellular debris, but possess only a microscopic opening to the skin surface. A pimple is when the oil or sebum and other material in the whitehead breaks through the pore wall and causes irritation underneath the skin. These are commonly seen on the face, neck, and back. There is no cure for acne, but it can be controlled with medication. Management is systematic with routine cleansing and systematic preparations. It is important not to pinch, pop, or pick at acne. This may cause the pimples to become larger or take longer to disappear. Additionally, the area may scar, which is particularly important for acne on the face. Impetigo contagiosa is caused by the Staphylococcus aurorus, or in combination with the beta hemolytic streptococci. The lack of personal hygiene, including an adequate cleansing of clothing and equipment, can also aid in the spread of this condition. Signs and symptoms include itching or burning that's usually not painful, sores rupture quickly, oozing fluid or pus that forms a crust. Eventually, the crust disappears, leaving a red mark that heals without scarring. This is commonly seen on the face, most often around the nose or mouth, and also favors body folds and areas that are subject to friction and occlusion, such as the thighs and the armpits. This may complicate several conditions, such as abrasions, atopic dermatitis, or individuals with a history of asthma, hay fever, or eczema. The crust will frequently be on the face, popliteal region, or antecubital fossa. Contact dermatitis, especially from shoe materials and rubberized pads, or irritant dermatitis, which is where the hands get chapped from frequent immersion in or handling of irritating substances. Ecthemia is a more serious form of impetigo. Scars may remain after the ulcers heal. With impetigo, individuals should not participate in physical activity until the crusts have dried to a thick, coagulated crust. For diffuse or multiple areas of impetigo, treatment consists of systemic antibiotics rather than a topical therapy. With prompt treatment, Impetigo usually clears within 7 to 10 days after the initiation of antibiotics. Folliculitis is the infection of a hair follicle caused by the Staphylococcus bacteria. This is also known as ingrown hairs. Hairs grow inward and curl up to form an infected nodule. Short, coarse hair, such as facial hair, the nape of the neck, chest, back, buttock, thighs, and skin underneath protective paddings can all be affected. These can develop from friction with pads or during shaving and where occlusive bathing suits are worn. This can also be caused by chemical irritants, inadequate chlorination, and superhydration of the skin caused by hot water temperatures. Inflammation begins with a pustule forming at the mouth of the hair follicle. A crust forms later, which will eventually slough off along the hair. These are relatively painless pustules and heal without scarring. 
They can also be associated with swelling and arrhythmia, with or without pustules, and may be present on the skin surface. Hot tub folliculitis is multiple pustular lesions on the trunk and extremities within six hours to two days of exposure to a hot tub. An onchia is inflammation of the matrix of the nail plate. Signs and symptoms include red, swollen, and painful nails, and purulent drainage, or pussy drainage. A paronchia is often seen in individuals whose hands are frequently immersed in water or mud, such as football linemen. In severe cases, it may require systemic antibiotics and drainage of the localized pus. A paronchia only involves the lateral border or the nail fold and often follows a hangnail. Hydrodentis superatorvara. This is a potentially serious chronic inflammatory condition. The condition is not present prior to puberty because the sweat glands are not active, but it can appear at any age afterwards. It's more commonly seen in women than in men, and it develops primarily in the sweat glands located in the armpits, groin, around the breast, and in the anal region. It is seen at a higher rate in extremely overweight individuals and cigarette smokers. Individuals suffering from this condition often feel socially isolated, suffering severe psychological impact because of this physically painful and disabling disease. Signs and symptoms include stage one, a solitary or multiple isolated firm red nodules without scarring or sinus tract inclusion occur in the armpits. Stage two, pustules and abscesses may discharge pus spontaneously and heal slowly. And then stage three is extensive, multi-regional involvement with multiple interconnected sinus tracts and scarring. This is difficult to treat. Early intervention to prevent scarring is necessary, which will ultimately require surgical intervention. For mild to moderate cases, the daily use of moist heat with antibacterial soap or burrow soaks can help. Topical medications such as benzoyl peroxide and a topical retinoid can also help. Cellulitis is caused by the beta hemolytic streptococcal or staphylococcal aureus. This occurs as an infection of the deep dermis and subcutaneous tissues. A lesion appears as an ill-defined area of tendered arrhythmia on the trunk or the extremities. These lesions usually occur around a break in the skin, such as surgical wounds, trauma, and tinea infections, such as athlete's foot or ulcerations. This condition is associated with intense pain, malaise, and fever, as well as lymphangitis. Lymphangitis is inflammation of the lymphatic vessels. Physical activity is contraindicated. Trauma can cause bacteremia. Bacteremia is the presence of bacteria in the blood, which can be fatal. In mild cases of cellulitis, oral antibiotics such as penicillin and amoxicillin can treat this condition. Most cases of superficial cellulitis improve within one day. Substantial cases may take 10 to 20 days for recovery. MRSA or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aurorus is caused by a strain of staph bacteria resistant to common antibiotics. Signs and symptoms include small red bumps that resemble pimples, boils, or spider bites, but can quickly turn into deep, painful abscesses. MRSA can be potentially life-threatening because of the inability to treat it with antibiotics. Under normal conditions, staph colonizes underneath the skin and inside the nose of an estimated 20 to 40% of healthy people. Individuals who have no symptoms are called carriers. When a breakdown of the skin occurs, the bacterium invades the body, producing a skin infection, such as an abscess or cellulitis, or a systemic infection, such as pneumonia or blood infections. The infection is spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact. At-risk populations include groups such as high school wrestlers, child care workers, and people who live in crowded conditions. The NCAA and the NFHS, or the National Federation of High Schools, regulations for bacterial infections and participation. Individuals must complete at least 72 hours of antibiotic therapy prior to returning to sports. 
No new lesions can occur within 48 hours prior to return. No moist, draining, or exudative lesions are allowed. If lesions are questionable, a gram stain is required if available. Active lesions may not be covered to participate. The general management of bacterial lesions. We want to cleanse the area with soap, water, and astringents. We want to use over-the-counter topical antibacterial agents and refer to physicians for incisions, drainage, or debridement as necessary. In severe conditions, a systemic antibiotic may be necessary. We want to withhold individuals from physical activity in the presence of satellite lesions, cellulitis, purulent conjunctivitis, weeping lesions, or large or multiple honey-crested lesions. Cellulitis, furuncles, and carbuncles are not significantly contagious, but continued trauma to the involved areas can lead to systemic complications. Suspected impetigo, we need to isolate the infected individual, including the athletic clothing and towels, to prevent the spread. Fungal skin lesions are quite common among physically active individuals. Fungus grows and thrives in dark, warm, moist environments, such as the areas between the toes or between the skin of the groin and scrotum. During activity, perspiration often accumulates in these areas. Augment that with wearing constrictive clothing, such as an athletic supporter, tight shorts, or spandex, and the perspiration often enhances and encourages fungal growth. In addition, tight garments can often cause chafing and irritation. The signs and symptoms of fungal skin conditions include small patches of erythema, scaling, severe itching. It's caused by dermophytes, also known as ringworm, or yeast, and it is contagious. It's spread by person to person by the sharing of towels or socks, walking without shoes in a locker room, or even showers. The fungal skin conditions that we will cover are tinea unguinum is a fungal infection of the toenails. It is yellowing of the nail or separation of the nail plate from the nail bed and accumulation of subunguinal debris. Treatment will vary depending on the type of infection, the severity of the nail changes, and the personal preference of the supervising physician and patient. Tinea pettis is often known as athlete's foot. It is the most frequent fungal infection in the physically active population. Based on individual susceptibility, however, it may not affect certain people. Extreme puritis, redness, and scaling on the soles of the feet and between the toes are common. When the toe webs are macerated and affected, the Canidae yeast is usually present in addition to the original germophyte. Scratching the area will only lead to scaling, peeling, and cracking fissures in the skin, particularly between the toes, and can spread the problem to other body parts. Tinea curis is jock itch and involves the genitalia but often originates in the feet. Curl and peritoneal folds between the scrotum and inner thighs are usually the first areas to exhibit small patches of arrhythmia and scaling. Other signs and symptoms include diffuse, thick, dark lesions, weeping vesicles, or pustules on the margins of the inflammation and severe itching. Infections can spread to the thighs, peritoneal area, buttocks, and the abdomen. Tinea corpus gladiatorium is tinea of the body. It is characterized by circular, puratic patches that are well demarcated and scaly with raised borders and a central healing zone. Their well-defined central ring is generally found on the upper extremities, axilla, and the trunk. Tinea capitis is ringworm of the scalp. Its primary source of infection are contaminated hairbrushes, combs, and even animals. This begins as a small papule on the scalp and spreads peripherally. The lesions appear as small gray scales, resulting in scattered bald patches. Tinea versicolor is a yeast infection common to active individuals. It's often seen on the trunk, upper arms, neck, abdomen, groin, and thighs, and may resemble freckles. It's referred to as sunspots. Tinea versicolor is best noted after exposure to the sun, while the rest of the skin tans, the area with tinea versicolor will not. Candidiasis is caused by the yeast infection, Candidia albicans. Candidiasis results in infections of the skin or the mucous membranes, or even in the vagina. Most common 
It is more common in women who wear a swimsuit or competition uniform for long periods of time. Lesions appear as deep, beefy red colors and is bordered with small red satellite pustules. The management for fungal skin conditions includes antifungal medication, changing warm, moist environments. If the condition is widespread or the condition does not clear, a physician referral is warranted. Viral skin infections are typically extremely contagious. Herpes simplex is one of those viral skin conditions. Herpes simplex virus has virus 1 and virus 2. HSV1 is also known as cold sores and infects the areas of the lips, nose, and the chin. HSV2 usually causes sores on the genitals such as the vagina, penis, and anus, and the skin around those areas. HSV1 causes about one-third of new cases of genital herpes. It is transmitted most often through oral sex. HSV2 causes two-thirds of all new genital herpes cases and 95% of all recurrences of genital herpes. It is the most commonly sexually transmitted disease in the United States. Herpes gladiatorium is an infection that may cause no other symptoms or may involve a fever, localized lymphadenopathy, malaise, myalgia, pharyngitis, or rarely, keratococonjunctivitis. Pre-existing abrasions or other underlying skin conditions can increase the likelihood of transmission. During the ulceration and crusting stage, the rash is often confused with impetigo, which may delay proper treatment. Signs and symptoms include burning, stinging pain, tenderness, or itching at the site, followed by clusters of vesicles on an erythematosus base. Lesions are capable of latency with tendency to reoccur. It is critical to identify early. The transmission is from direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. Incubation takes 2-12 to 12 days and common sites include the head, upper extremities, and the trunk. Management should include immediate physician referral. Herpes zoster is also known as shingles. Local trauma and contact sports occasionally can precipitate reactivation of the varicella virus. Signs and symptoms include unilateral blister-like lesions erupting along a dermatome, usually T3 to L3. Signs and symptoms include headache, malaise, swollen lymph nodes near the site of eruption, and a low-grade fever. Participation in contact sports should be prohibited for both pain relief and to lessen transmission to others who have never had chickenpox. Oral antiviral drugs must be taken early or they are not effective. If the condition is not recognized and treated early, the physician will likely advise the individual to let shingles run its course. A case of shingles, although painful, usually heals within a month or two without treatment. Verrucula virus is a development of a wart. There are more than 60 types of the human papillomavirus, or HPV, that can lead to rapid growth of cells on the outer layer of the skin, resulting in a wart. Pressure on the wart increases pain. It's often subjected to a secondary bacterial infection because of its location. In the hands, these typically occur as small, round, elevated lesions with rough, dry surfaces. In the feet, plantar warts are more common. These actually have red or black dots representing capillaries that have been penetrated by the root of the wart. They're likely transmitted from swimming pool decks or shower rooms. Within six months, most young people develop an immunological reaction to the virus and the wart may disappear with or without treatment. For others, any treatment will be ineffective and may require actual removal of the wart. Mosculosum contagiosum is a pox virus. It is spread by personal contact in contaminated swimming pools and gymnastic equipment. Signs and symptoms include pearly papules, approximately 3 to 5 centimeters, that are flesh colored to yellow and have a tiny round spot on the surface. They're primarily a cosmetic problem, but blunt trauma can rupture a papule, causing a disabling local inflammatory condition. Treatment by a physician includes a destructive mechanical modality, 
such as a curatage, such as electrotherapy or cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen. Full activity can be resumed in two to four days after resolution. This is a highly contagious pox virus producing characteristic dome-shaped shiny wax papules with a central white core. Management for this condition should include immediate referral to a physician. So there's several other dermatological conditions that we want to cover. Intertrigo is chafing of the skin. This is superficial dermatitis caused by the friction of fabric rubbing against a moist, warm surface of the skin. This condition may occur between the creases of the neck in the axillary or buttock area or beneath large breasts but is primarily seen in the groin region in individuals with muscular thighs or in obese individuals. In severe cases, the skin can become eroded and starts weeping. This can be prevented by wearing soft, loose cotton underwear to keep the skin dry, clean, and friction-free, or by wearing shorts with longer legs made of low-friction fabric. Treatment involves the initial application of a cold compress, cleansing daily with mild soap and water, and followed by an application of a soothing ointment. Athlete's nodules are asymptomatic dermal nodules. These are typically found at sites of repeated minor trauma, such as the feet of surfers and runners, the knees of canoeists, and the knuckles of boxers. Protective pads can help decrease the pain. Acne mechanica presents with papules and pustules in the areas of mechanical trauma. This is also known as football acne. Its causative factor is chin straps, forehead bands, shirt collars, football shoulder pads, backpack straps, automobile seat belts, bras, wide belts, and orthopedic casts and braces. Signs and symptoms, if left untreated, the acne may develop into a cyst. Treatment and prevention includes thoroughly cleansing the area after a workout with a mild abrasive cleaner and back brush and applying a topical astringent. In severe cases, a systemic antibiotic may be prescribed. This condition usually improves or resolves after the season is over. Striae distinense. This is stretch marks. The origin of stretch marks is unclear, but occurs most often after rapid growth of a body part. We see this sometimes after pregnancy. Linear pink or flesh-colored patches occur on the skin. These are most often seen on the chest, shoulders, and the upper outer arms. Unfortunately for many, no treatment is currently available. We also have a sunburn. To prevent sunburn, we want to apply sunscreen. The effectiveness of sunscreen is based on the sun protective factor, or SPF. For example, an SPF of 15 indicates that an individual can be exposed to ultraviolet light 15 times longer than without sunscreen before the skin will begin to burn. The higher numbers of SPF provide better sun protection. The full extent of the injury may not be assessed until 24 to 48 hours after exposure. Although sunburns are easily treated, it's best to prevent them from occurring. We can have signs and symptoms. A first degree sunburn may result in only mild arrhythmia. In a second degree, vesicles or blisters occur in addition to the arrhythmia. In a third degree, skin ulcerations, a systemic fever, chills, nausea, and exhaustion occur. The management for a mild sunburn is a cold compress, hydrocortisone, and sometimes aloe. For moderate to severe, we should refer these individuals to a physician. Malaria rubra is prickly heat. The cause is from active sweat glands that become blocked by an organic debris, leading to an inflamed and parotic skin eruption. The treatment for this condition includes cooling and drying the skin, controlling the itch, and watching for infection. Eczema can either be acute or chronic and is an inflammatory condition of the skin. Eczema can have an onset in the first two years of life and a history of asthma or hay fever may be reported. Eczema can take a physical and emotional toll on individuals. Signs and symptoms include poorly marginated arrhythmia with scaling and exudate. Persistent itching and burning can lead to excoriation, and this condition can be aggravated by an increase in body heat and perspiration. Management should include topical corticosteroids 
an emollient cream or ointments based to serve as a substitute for soap, bath oils, and moisturizers. Consistent use of the steroid cream is essential for it to be effective. Psoriasis is a chronic distressing skin disorder. It can affect skin, tendons, ligaments, and even joint. Factors that may trigger psoriasis include a systemic infection such as strep throat, an immune system response to disease, injury to the skin, certain medications, alcohol, and environmental factors such as overexposure to the sun or prolonged contact with chemicals such as disinfectants or paint thinners. Topical therapies are effective for mild to moderate cases where phototherapy and systemic medications are more appropriate for more severe cases. Non-melanoma skin cancers are the most common cancer in humans worldwide. They're classified into two categories depending on which type of cell is affected, either a basal cell carcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma. Both of these arise from keratinocytes and they rarely spread elsewhere on the body. Due to the rising incidence of this largely preventable form of cancer, the NCAA issued a sports medicine guideline in 2012 to address safety and prevention concerns. Melanoma is a skin cancer arising from melanocytes found in the stratum basilae, eye, inner ear, meninges, heart, and even the bone. It is the most common type of superficial spreading melanoma and nodular melanoma. Individuals who are most susceptible to melanoma include individuals who are fair-skinned, with blue eyes, sunburn easily, have had multiple sunburns at an early age, and also have a family history of skin cancer. There is a rising incidence in overall mortality rate worldwide for this condition. This kills young adults more often than any other cancer. Hyperhidrosis is excessive perspiration. This condition can interfere with sports that require holding various objects such as a ball, discus, bar, oars, or even sticks, or requires gripping such as a tennis or racquetball. The plantar sweat glands are often stimulated when the extremities are used and during times of emotional excitement, which also stimulates the axillary apocrine glands. A number of factors can affect how much an individual sweats and even how the sweat smells. Some people sweat more than others for no apparent reason. However, other factors can cause intense sweating. These can include hereditary, certain foods such as spicy foods, hot beverages, or beverages containing caffeine or alcohol, and certain drugs, some antipsychotic medications, morphine, excessive doses of the thyroid hormone thyroxine, and overdoses of analgesics such as aspirin and acetaminophen can cause excessive sweating. Women going through menopause may also experience hot flashes or a rise in the skin temperature accompanied by sweating and a feeling of intense heat because of a drop in estrogen levels. Some menopausal women may also be awakened at night by soaking sweats followed by chills. Signs and symptoms include excessive perspiration triggered by emotion. Most commonly affected areas are the face, underarms, palms, and the soles of the feet. Palmer hyperhidrosis is usually accompanied by plantar hyperhidrosis. Bromohydrosis is infection and skin maceration there are some medications, including Botox and some other medications that can help with hyperhidrosis. The best management is typically an antiperspirant, topical cream. Frostbite is caused by vasoconstriction in response to cold, resulting in the freezing of body tissues. This occurs commonly in exposed skin, especially in the ears, nose, cheek, and even the wrists. Intrinsic risk factors include fatigue, circulatory impairment, malnutrition, prior history of cold injuries. Extrinsic and environmental factors include wind chill, inadequate or constrictive clothing, high altitude, or prolonged cold exposure. Bites and stings can also occur. Things like mosquitoes, flies, spiders, ants, bees, fleas, and ticks can either bite or sting. Signs and symptoms include painful and itchiness. Management includes cold application and topical corticosteroids. Individuals can have potentially life-threatening allergic reactions to the venoms in either a bite or a sting. This can result in anaphylaxis. 
This is immediate shock-like frequency, a fatal hypersensitivity reaction. Anaphylaxis is characterized by the contraction of smooth muscle and dilation of the capillaries because of the release of pharmacologically active substances such as histamine, bradykinin, and serotonin. Individuals should be encouraged to carry an EpiPen auto-injector, which is a disposable epinephrine drug delivery system with a spring-activated needle. It's used to treat severe allergic reactions to insect bites or stings, foods, drugs, or other allergens. Hymenopterin venom may result in an allergic and anaphylactic reaction for an individual who is either bite or stung. Signs and symptoms will include a painful wheel or hive. The site rapidly becomes puritic, and symptoms can extend beyond the site to include dyspnea, tachycardia, hypotension, and anaphylaxis. This could result in a medical emergency. These individuals should be monitored carefully. If the individual seems to be struggling to breathe, we should activate EMS immediately. Spiders. Typical spider bite results in a local reaction and painful lesions that may be puritic, red, and swollen. It can also result in a systemic reaction, which includes restlessness, hypersalivation, dysphagia, visual changes, roving eye movements, respiratory distress either with strider or wheezing, strider is a high pitch wheeze, hypertension, fever, loss of bowel or bladder continence, muscle spasms, and even paralysis. The management for a spider bite is to treat the symptoms and potentially transport to the nearest medical facility. Tick bites. Ticks are parasites that attach their heads to people or animals and absorb their blood. Rocky Mountain spotted fever and Lyme disease may occur after a tick bite. Signs and symptoms include a headache, low-grade fever, fatigue, and muscle pain. The management is immediate referral to a physician. To remove a tick, apply a substance that blocks access to the air. The tick's head should withdraw, but do not attempt to pull the head from the body. This picture is a picture of Lyme disease. You can see the characteristic bullseye rash that appears three days to one month after the infection and presents itself as multiple annular lesions of arrhythmia with central clearing. Scabies is caused by a burrowing mite which produces severe, intensely itching lesions in the area that it burrows. Signs and symptoms include intense itching, affected areas will appear as small, tiny burrows with tiny vesicles, and symptoms could be within 24 hours or delayed for several weeks. The management includes immediate physician referral and topical creams, disinfectant of clothing, and equipment. Lice can occur on the body, head, and genitals. They're spread by close physical contact. They can take 10 days for the knit to hatch. Signs and symptoms are based on the location of the infection, but patients may describe nighttime itching and thorough subsequent scratching, pustules, and excoriation. Management includes topical lotions and shampoos and disinfecting clothing and equipment. Contact dermatitis results as a reaction to coming in contact with different substances. Signs and symptoms include arrhythmia, puritis, pain, and swelling. Allergic contact dermatitis is when a substance comes in direct contact with the skin, such as a simple inflammatory reaction. Common agents that contribute to the condition include adhesive tape, rubber articles such as straps, pads, swim goggles, swim fins, swim caps, or even shoes, tape adherent and remover, soap, detergents, and deodorants. Allergic dermatitis remains localized to the affected area and is identified by dry vesicles accompanied by pain, arrhythmia, and periodic conditions. Heat, internal or external, intensifies the symptoms and accelerates the skin's reaction. Irritant contact dermatitis is a substance that causes direct skin damage. This affects only the area in direct contact with a causative agent. There is typically a sharp line of demarcation between the normal and affected skin. This often occurs secondary to physical and mechanical agents such as dry ice burns, abrasions from artificial turf, poorly fitted equipment that causes friction burns, striae, or increased sweating between skin folds, and during skin loss secondary to the application of a caustic agent such as adhesive tape. 
the causative agent should be identified and contact with the agent eliminated. Disqualification from activity is dependent upon the degree of skin involvement and the severity of symptoms and the specific sport, such as contact versus non-contact. Management for contact dermatitis should include a cold compress, topical and systemic antihistamines.